Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is a continuation of my last video where I talked about modern Hollywood and the strong female characters. You can check out that video here if you want, but as for this one, it's pretty much a part two on this topic. I went over a few examples and common traits that these modern strong female characters have, and in this video I want to look what type of message this sort of characterization sends to the audiences, to young women, and why, in general, the audience's response to Rey from Star Wars and Galadriel from The Rings of Power, I'm go, Galadriel. Galadriel. Yeah. to Jen from She-Hulk, and to many other characters like them, has not been the most enthusiastic. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to do so if you're enjoying the content, and let me know if there are any topics that you would like me to cover in the future. So in the previous video, I talked about the unrelatability of strong female characters in modern Hollywood, how they tend to be emotionally distant from others, pretty much always portrayed as in the right, how there is little character growth because of that, and how easy it is for these characters to master their powers, even though they only learned that they had them yesterday. And probably the worst of all is that these characters are portrayed as protagonists, as heroes, and the implication is that we should be rooting for them and that we should like them. And yes, this has been said a million times, but the Mary Sue character is going to be unrelatable to real women, real people. Such character tropes cheapen the story. They take away the substance. It's like skipping the main course and going straight to dessert and the dessert isn't even that good. That's not always the case, but if there is no real lesson to be learned for the main protagonist, if there is no character growth to be had, the story is less interesting to follow. The story is less interesting to follow when you know that the main character will easily defeat the enemy and probably learn nothing, except that she was right all along and that she is even more awesome than she thought in the beginning. The impression that I get is that many of these modern stories aim to be character-driven, primarily. But for that to work, the character must be compelling and have a good arc, good character development, if the story is going to revolve around him or her, right? Of course, if that's not there, if that's missing, a character-driven story falls flat. Because I think that's what they were going with, Jen, Rey, Galadriel... I'm a girl, Galadriel. Yeah. I think that's what they were aiming for, mainly character rather than plot-driven driven stories. But I don't think these characters were written well enough to pull that off, to carry their respective stories. Since I covered it the most and am familiar with it the most, let's look at The Rings of Power as an example. It comes across as if they wanted to center the story around Galadriel, since we follow her around for most of season one, and you could say that hers was the main story in the show, into which all the other subplots eventually converge. But since her story arc, at least until now, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, doesn't have much substance, she does not make for an engaging central character. All she does is run around, angry, vengeful, and sits like a spoiled child until she gets what she wants. And when the story demands it, she changes her mind on a dime, not because she went through any proper actual logical character growth, but simply because the story demands it. I think the biggest issue with strong female characters is that these movies and shows have to put others down to elevate the protagonist. If you have to make other characters into stubborn idiots for no reason, that are going to highlight the brilliance of your female protagonist, or make them silly, patronizing and inferior to your main female lead, or even take something away from them in your remake to give it to your strong female protagonist, then I don't think you're doing a very good job at writing the she protagonist. It's all very artificial. We are at point A, how do we get to point C? It's very narrow-minded, goal-oriented. No one cares if B, the journey there, makes sense. It's just getting from A to C. We don't really care about the B. The issue is that when people write these characters, they only see it as one-dimensional. We need this type of character, a strong female protagonist, and to be strong means to be X, Y, and Z. But there is much more nuance there. There are so many ways to show strength, and a man may show it differently than a woman. It's shocking, I know, but you can have a strong man and a strong woman in a film simultaneously. And their strength can show in different ways. Maybe the woman is very clever and insightful, fierce and determined, 
someone who discovers that her worth comes from within and that she is more than just her looks. Maybe she's a brave single mother who protects her child and fights for what she knows is right. Or hey, maybe the man and the woman in the film can both be fighters, warriors. But one's victories don't have to trump the other one's accomplishments. There's a very clear reflection of modern day feminism in this, where it's no longer about feminism being, you know, for equality, but it's, it's about one side, we all know which one, kind of rising above the other one and the spotlight being on that side. If the only way to be a strong woman now is to put others down, is that really something to aspire to? And yeah, that's a combination of lazy bad writing and of putting the agenda first. As in, we need more of this type of character than all the other characters are left underdeveloped or they just don't bother with them because they just want to center the protagonist. There's this attempt to erase traditional gender norms in movies, give women more agency, more action, I guess that's what they're aiming for. Yet the female protagonist still often gets the short end of the stick, because the way a lot of these female characters are written now is basically they're written like men, and not very good, likable men. There's a difference between being stoic and being downright uncompassionate and so low on empathy that you are actually just plain rude. Yet the show is still framing you as a protagonist that should be rooted for, and erasing some traditional established gender norms isn't necessarily bad in and of itself, but the way the whole thing is actually framed and the way everything ends up working in the end, well, it doesn't end up working, that's the problem. These strong female characters are receiving praise for being rude to the man around them and to the people around them, they are great at everything, they never need to genuinely improve or rethink their position. Instead of focusing on writing a good character and a good story, regardless of whether they are a man or a woman or a person of color or a whatever they may be, it should be about writing a good story, about writing a good character. But instead, it's all about ticking those boxes and making sure those quotas are fulfilled. And that's just a very sad state of modern cinema, I think, for the most part, with exceptions, of course. But let me know what you guys think, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, I always like to read them, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week in another video. Take care, guys! And the cat, you can't really see the cat, but she's here, she's resting, she's being cute. What are you doing, babes?